Good morning, everybody. It's nearly 12 o'clock and nearly ready for the LVS Ascot open morning. So I think we're just coming up to 11.59, if a little while longer. And let's see who we have here. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful. Okay, I think we'll, we'll make a start. So this is the LVS Ascot open day. And normally I'd be welcoming you to our fantastic site and you'd be sat in our purpose-built theatre and uh, enjoying all our amazing facilities. It's good to see a few people logging in already. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. And uh, so it's such a shame you're not here. Such a shame that I'm, I'm sat in my office on my own. It looks like I'm talking to myself if anybody was looking through the window. Uh, but I'm not. I'm talking to you. So good morning. And I'm really glad that you're joining us this morning. So for the next half an hour, I'm going to talk a little bit. Well, I'm going to talk a lot about LVS Ascot because I've got an awful lot to say. And you can send through your questions. And our Director of Admissions, who is Maura Buttermer, is also online. So she will be able to answer some of your questions that are specific to her and the joining process or, or general queries about the school. And then you can send your questions through to me. And when I finish talking, hopefully by the end of uh, this morning, um, then I will answer your questions directly as directly too so wh where are we well first of all we're in sunny ascot it's beautiful out there today we're in 26 acres of beautiful land and we're about a mile away from from mascot race course so it's a wonderful site it's purpose-built we moved here in 1985 took four years to build the building having moved from slough and uh, purpose-built facilities, absolutely wonderful facilities. So the school is actually part of the licensed trade charity. And the school, although it's in a very modern building, was has been established since 1803. It started in 1803 in Kennington in London. And it was a group of publicans who wanted a better education for their children. And I'm going to say in a light and airy environment, because it's in our constitution, that our school always has to be in a light and airy environment. Now, within 30 years, that school became too small for the amount of children in it. It started with 12 under the age of 12. And by 1836, it had been completely rebuilt. It's a magnificent building, complete with an indoor swimming pool. The Queen had become our patron. Lord Melbourne had put the first stone in the foundations of that school, and it went from strength to strength. Back in those days, children could have half a pint of ale at lunchtime because the water in London was so dirty. But I can guarantee that Ascot water is perfect now, and so that doesn't apply to us anymore. So in the early 1900s, about 1936, the school again became too small for the amount of children, and it moved to Slough. And if you're familiar with Slough, it's where the Tesco's is. And I can remember that being built in my previous school when I was at St Bernard's Grammar School. And um, so the school moved over to from Slough. It was there until 1985. And then it came back to over to Ascot in 1985 uh, because it became too small again. Now, in that school in Slough, the children were separated at break times by a matron with her cane, keeping them apart. And um, I can tell you, we don't do that anymore either. So we hear some lovely stories from our alumni who were in Slough, but we are a very different school now. We are a co-ed day and boarding school for children aged four to 18. And we're all, an all ability school as well. So it means that we don't have any entry tests. As long as we can provide the education that you deserve, then you have a place here. We are like one big family. And when I say a big family, we have currently over 830 students are on roll. And, um, we, and we enjoy living on this beautiful site as well. And the children, they share the site. So the junior school will have classes in the science labs and the music rooms and the theatre. And, and we take part with helping out in the junior school too. So some of our children might go down and hear the children read or help with sport. So we're very much a through school, a through community. So a little bit about our aims, our ethos and our mission. So um, we, I often tell this story through my own eyes as a mum, as well as a principal. Now, I came here 17 years ago. In fact, just coming up to 18 now. And I came from the state sector. I had taught in a very tough, comprehensive school in Stevenage. And then I went to St. Bernard's Grammar School for seven years as head of music. And then I came here as director of music nearly 18 years ago. And 
I wanted to come to a school where we had the resources and the ability to deliver the best education possible. And that's why I've been here so long, because I truly believe in what our school can offer. Now, my children at the time, I had a boy in year three, I had a daughter, Sophia, in reception and a baby at home. And um, I came here because I wanted to teach music. Uh, music was my life, it still is. And I wanted to develop the music here at LVS Ascot. Now, on the first day, my year three boy, Tom, who was very, very quiet, hardly said a word, and my daughter in reception sang all the way home in the back of the car. And I went home and I said to my husband, hey, I think we've cracked it. The children are happy. And I firmly believe that if children are happy, then anything is possible. Anything they want to do is possible, but happiness has to come first. So I'm going to skip forward because that quiet little boy in year three continued to be very quiet and he was accepted for who he was. He found good things he was good at. He tried things. He dropped things. He made mistakes. He he went through school being a very happy boy. He didn't particularly like rugby. Oh, he was scared. So, he, you know, at least he could run fast, but he didn't have to pursue it if he didn't want to. He found hockey and football. The school found the skills and the things that he wanted to do and to develop his life the way that he wanted to do it. And then at 14, he discovered economics. And cut a very long story short, he's now 24 and he works for a, an, a pension investment company in town. He's got a master's degree in finance. He found what he was good at. He's not very quiet anymore. He can really talk about economics, but he found his heart. He found what he wanted to do and he found his passion. My daughter, she's a girl. If you've got different genders in your family, you will know that girls and boys are very different. Girls will always do things 10 times, won't they? They'll draw something and if it's not good enough, they'll put it in the bin. And you think, why? You should have kept it, it was good. Girls are very different. My daughter was driven. She was a brilliant, still is, athlete, very good on the stage. But she went off to university to economics too and she's just finishing that now. And then the baby, now if you've got three children, you will know that that third one or the fourth one has the ability to wrap you around your little finger. And um, and it's hard work with, the, with one, but Ollie is very different and I'm, I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning his name on screen, but he's just coming to the end of his A-levels. And he's a little boy that loved climbing trees and running around and getting muddy and getting wet. And, he sh and he's been able to develop his skills too. And for some reason, unbeknown for me, number three wants to do economics too. I have no idea where it comes from. But what I do know is my children have been through this school and they're happy. They're confident. They can look you in the face. They know what they want to do in life and they're out there now ready to conquer the world. We offer so much for children. We offer every possibility. Our academic, pastoral and co-curricular offering is second to none. We received an excellent in the ISI inspection for taking care of children and making sure that their personal development was absolutely superb. So moving on. So that's why I'm here and I've stayed here. I had a pretty tough education myself. I was driven through the 12 plus system in High Wycombe. It went horribly wrong. I ended up in a grammar school for two years where I was absolutely miserable and my light went off. Now, luckily, I had a very feisty mother who marched down to the local education authority and demanded that I left school and went to a model comprehensive. She could see my light was going out and she demanded that place would be given by the end of the day. She would sit there all weekend. And by Friday at four o'clock, I had a place in that comprehensive. There's no looking back because if I'd stayed there, I would have been lucky to, in their words, get two CSEs and the rest is history. I went through an education. My light came back on. I went to a superb school. They gave me every confidence to just grab every opportunity and to succeed. And therefore, my ethos, and I still get really emotional about it as an adult, is that children have to be happy. They have to be secure. They have to be safe. And they have to be given opportunities. And it doesn't matter if they fall down and fail at one thing, because it's what you do next. It's about getting yourself up off the floor and taking on the next challenge. So at LVS, we are non-selective. There are no tests. There are no SATs. There is no entrance exam into the senior school. And yes, we do do GCSEs and A-levels, although that's a little bit of a fib because this year there aren't any. <laughs> that's another story. If you want to hear that, what that LVS perspective was two weeks ago, it's on our YouTube and it's on this Facebook channel as well. So please have a look. I do feel for those children. 
But yes, we do very, very well. As I say, we're non-selective, so our results are constantly way, way above the national average. In fact, our year 11 took their GCSE maths early in October of this year, so that's seven months earlier than they should do, and 88% passed. And we had a, a, an amazing achievement for grades seven, eight, and nine, which is the A and A stars. And some of those children that have reached their target now, uh, lucky, have had that real GCSE, and they don't have to continue with that unless they're going to do A levels. So we're really proud of our academic achievement. We have a very, very broad curriculum. And as I say, we share our expertise right across the school. So our junior school will, will be in our science labs. We teach Spanish right through the junior school and then French and Spanish in the senior school. We have, um, obviously we have English, maths and science, and then physics, uh, philosophy, history, geography, law, psychology, we have sport, you name it, we've got something for everyone because we're all different and we need a curriculum that suits everyone so that we can get the best out of everyone. And we have a heads of year and a deputy head academic that monitors progress really, really carefully. We, we know the individual. We know what your child is capable of doing. And we make sure that they get there. But they get there happily. Happily, that's the main thing. And that leads on to pastoral care. So again, we have small classes and small tutor groups. And the junior school will either have their class teacher and, and in the senior school, they'll have their tutors. We have integrated day houses. So we have six houses across the school and they are doubled up into three houses in the junior school. And we take part in loads and loads and loads of competitions. So anything from house sport to house cooking, house debating, house drama, you name it, there's a competition for, for nearly everything. And we total those points up for the house cup at the end of the year. We have a health and well-being centre. We're really proud of that. And we're actually taking part in a lot of national awards this year. So we, in that health and well-being centre, that's where our medical team uh, stay. We have a resident nurse. And we also have areas where children can look at mindfulness and other health and well-being initiatives. We also have a health and well-being centre as well with a manager. And she's there in the same place every day so that if the children need her, they know where to find her. And she's amazing because we need to make sure that children with all the stresses and strains that they have, and it is tough for them, that they have someone to talk to and that we can take them through strategies to make sure that school is a really positive learning experience for them as well. And if they're happy, you as parents will be happy. And if you're happy and the children are happy, I'm happy. And that leads on to co-curricular because our co-curricular provision is absolutely amazing. As I said, our facilities are extensive. We have a 25 meter swimming pool. We have tennis courts, cricket nets. We have pitches. We have a gym. We have food um, facilities for cooking. We have, you name it, we've got it. And we make the most of them. There's always something going on here. And our curricular activities take place throughout the day and after school and at the weekend if you're a boarder or you're taking part in a show. We put on at least two to three major shows uh, a year, and therefore there is never a dull moment. And we watch to make sure that children are taking part too, because it's all those extra bits. It's not just about learning in class. It's about trying different things, trying skills that you didn't know you had. And you do that through the extra, the extra lessons outside of the normal formal time. So that's who we are. We're, we're a very, very happy, very vibrant school. So, Looking at the school community, we are like a family. Last night, we had a, a, a Zoom meeting for the World of Work party, which is um, predominantly uh, mums from the school who were working, but also dads as well, and the PTA. And we all got onto Zoom, and we had a good chat last night about how we were all feeling and how the children are, are coping. Because as you may know, we have been delivering online lessons since lockdown. And we've done it exceptionally well. In fact, I am so proud of what we've managed to do. So we use Microsoft Teams. And in a week, over a week, we deliver over 1,800 lessons, which is incredible. And the feedback we've had from parents has been absolutely amazing. Really, really well done to everyone. And we're always listening and learning because online learning is not ideal. You shouldn't be sat in front of a computer screen for five or six hours a day. So we're listening to parents and we're listening to pupils and we're being flexible and adaptable, but we're not behind. 
we're not like it says in the news where some children, especially in disadvantaged areas, are six months behind. We are not behind. We are doing really well and we're carrying on as normal. So we're still having exams and assessments. Um, when I say normal, we haven't got all the fun stuff at the end of term, but we keep if we keep working, we will make sure that when we come back in September, we will hit the ground running. And that brings me on to the next thing, because we are looking at transition and induction into the school at the moment. So our, our aim is, if you have already applied to the school and you filled in the forms and been in contact with the, our director of missions, we will make sure the children are online on 365 by the 1st of June. And we're currently uh, arranging a whole series of programs. It could be film clips, live interviews. It could be seeing some of the children on the on screen, having a Zoom chat with your prospective tutor group to make sure that your children feel connected with us from June so that they don't have the anxiety of waiting. Not only are they at home now because of lockdown, but they won't have the anxiety of the summer as well. We can't bring them to our site physically, but we can engage with your children now. And our current children are really looking forward to getting to know your children too. So if you haven't applied and you still want to do, you can download a, an application form from the, from the website and return it to our Director of Admissions. And if we receive everything back, then we can get your child online on the 1st of June. So those children coming in, in years nine and year 10 would also send a little bit of work over as well, some, some English, math and science to make sure that you and our current pupils are all up to speed and at the same point so that you can hit the ground running in September. We want to alleviate that pressure from you and we've got the time and the resources to do it. So we're ready to embrace it. So if you haven't signed up, sign up. We also offer scholarships. Now that's passed for this year coming, so for September, they've already taken place. But generally we offer scholarships in year seven and for year 12, and they're quite generous. They can be up to 50% of the school fees, of the day fees that is. And even more so generous, I think, for the A-levels as well. And we will start that process again in the autumn term for children who are in year six and year 11. And that all takes place up until about November. And then we have the offers that they come out in December. So that's our scholarship process. And we'll be starting to give out more details about that and how to apply for those scholarships. So that's uh, a little bit about who we are. As I say, we are a community as well as the WOW group, as well as the choir, there's the PTA and, um, and we're always enjoying fun with the PTA. We have quizzes and we, we have a ball, all sorts of things. So we are a family. And we reflected that in our summer term fees this term as well, because we realised that this is a tremendously difficult time and it's going to be probably a very tricky couple of months. And therefore, our school fees were discounted by 50% this term with no boarding fees. And we were actually contacted by a number of media because we think that's probably the the, the the most generous offer that independent schools have actually offered their community. And that's because we care, we can, and we have done. We want to be a family and we will look after each other as a family. So I think I'm coming to the end of it. I'm looking at my little my little sheet of paper that I have wavering above my head to make sure I haven't missed anything because um, obviously, as I said, I'm here on my own and I've got to rely on myself to remind myself that I've covered everything. So hopefully I can see some uh, some questions coming through. So if you've got any questions, please fire them through. And oh, we've got somebody coming in from Zimbabwe. Well, good afternoon or good evening to you. I hope you, you're, you're well. So it'd be lovely to hear a little bit more from you if you want me to send some more details through now at the moment. Um, I've some lovely comments coming through. So if there are a couple of current parents on here as well. So just had a lovely message from one of our parents who is LVS has changed our daughter's life. It's such a happy, happy, safe place. Thank you so much for that comment. That, that's lovely. And one from our director of mission, she's there. She's saying our admissions process is very straightforward as an all ability school. We do not con conduct formal assessment tests. So you can see that comment on there. So she's there to answer your questions if you if you need her. So uh, we, again, we've had someone say, when is the uh, ha when is happening the formal entrance test? There are no entrance tests. We will when you fill in your application form, we will we can't really apply to your 
current school at the moment because there's no one there. Uh, we can do our best. But if you could just attach your latest school report, then we'd be able to consider that as part of, you know, whether we, we see that we are the right place for you. Um, so that's that's it. So all I'd say, though, if you're thinking for September, that you need to start the process moving um, along now. Um, another one here, you're doing a brilliant job with the online schooling. Archie's really enjoying it. Thank you very much. Uh, do you still have places for infant school this September? Yes, we do. How exciting for you. That's lovely. That is really exciting when children start school. You must be really, really excited. Um, so yes, we do. So Moira's here. So if you want to talk to her, then just flag to her as well. Um, so another question here. We are due to start at LVS in September. What is available for the children starting as an induction beforehand? So I've, I've just worked through that we, if you already signed up, we will make sure that all your children have a 365, Microsoft 365 account, and that we will send you uh, details of the induction program through that. And we're also exploring Zoom so that if you're new as well, that you can make contact with other parents. So for example, the lady that's just asked about the infant school place, it might be nice if, if mum and child or dad and child want to Zoom in with other parents and get to know them and to get to know the children in the class as well. So let's see, had any more uh, questions coming through here? So lots of good mornings. It's nice to see you. Any, any specific questions for me? So um, ideally you would like to visit the school depending on the current restrictions in place. I would be grateful if you could send details around fees as well as details on early bird and after school activities. Yeah, it would be lovely to see you. And I think we're going to have a little bit more um, feedback from the government today about maybe lifting some of the restrictions. So it may be that even if the school's not back, we may be able to have um, individual parents over. But we would have to talk that through with our director of admissions, obviously, now that um, once we've had that information over the weekend but you won't be disappointed. Oh, we got someone from Singapore. Hello, our three boys are looking forward to starting September, year eight, year six, and year two. Another message has come through. I've got to find yours now because it's whizzed up the screen. Um, so hello, how exciting is that? Three children starting, you must be so excited. So we'll make sure that your boys are all on 365 and that they can meet their peers and they can be part of the tutor group. Do you offer places to children with the e EHCPs? If you have an EHCP, could you send that through to Maura, please? Okay, because we do have limited provision for supporting children. And again, it's all whether those uh, needs can be supported. So I'm scrolling through again. Keep your questions coming. I like to be kept busy. Okay, so if there's if you need any more questions, if you want to direct them to Moria, because I'm going to probably be here for now. I'm often told I talked far too much, and I'm coming up to 25 minutes. And our marketing department say, you know, you must come off after 30 minutes, or you'll start boring people. But I'm, I'm going to be here for the next few minutes. But you can always direct your queries to our director of admissions. We will be looking at having small group tours as well. So if you're interested specifically in the junior school. If you let our director know, then she will arrange a time when you can meet the head of the infant and junior school, Rachel Cox. She can give virtual tours as well, so you can get to see the site. And if you want to meet individual staff, for example, the head of sick form, we can arrange that too. So the next one is um, bus routes. Yes, we have really extensive bus routes. Our children come from a wide range of places right across the country. So people come in from London. That's very popular. We have um, children coming from Reading in the north as far as Chalfont and Rick uh, Buses come through Gerrard's Cross, Beaconsfield, Slough, Windsor. They go right down to Woking on the other hand as well. So a lot of children are uh, on our many mini buses and buses. And plus we have an international community as well. And we're looking forward to everybody hopefully coming back to school in September from abroad as well. So that's about um, bus routes. Any other questions? It's really lovely that you're here today. And it's just a shame I can't see you. Um, but hopefully we will meet again in even sunnier circumstances. And you can come and see our beautiful school. And I'd love to meet you personally. So if there's nothing else to say, I'm going to say over and out.
And until we meet again, um, I hope you keep safe and happy. And if you want to sign up and get on our program on the 1st of June, do so right away. Have a lovely weekend. It's lovely to meet you. Goodbye.